Welcome back to today's final splash of paint, where it's time for us to join Marilyn Alice for another drop of Caribbean sunshine as she concludes today's colourful Try Your Hand at project. Earlier on in the programme, you saw we get this painting to this stage, so we're going to carry on with it now. I'm going to just wet the whole of this lady's dress. It's really beautiful. Lots of colour in there, very flowing. Just really sort of captures the Caribbean. Just clear water. And I'm going to drop some mauve in, some intense violet, quite powerful, where there's white areas that are in slight shadow, just down the bottom here. And then I'm going to use some phthalo blue, which is a little bit more artificial, but I think we'll just sort of give you that Caribbean feel. So quite watered down to start with. Some of that has really been hit by sunlight. Right, I'm going to use some yellow now, some cadmium yellow. Nice and bright. Just let that run into that wash. Add a little bit of orange too, cadmium orange. It really doesn't matter if you don't follow the shapes exactly. We're just sort of getting the essence of that tie-dyed fabric. That's drying a little bit. There's a pearl wash of blue on that sleeve. Just make sure that you've covered all the bits where there's sunlight hitting it first. Whilst that's drying, we'll go on to her headdress. I might leave the background white, so I need to put a little bit of hint of colour onto that. So I'm just going to go with some lemon yellow, very watered down, just so it shows up a little bit. Just wash that over. A little bit of alizarin crimson. bit of that green. It's the Prussian blue and the lemon yellow mixed together and now some intense violet for the shadow just around here. I'll carry on with her arms and her legs. Some burnt umber. Catch that, that can run, that's not a problem. A little bit of light on that leg and sepia for the bit that's in a lot of shadow. Back to the burnt umber for her arm. A little bit of sunlight on that part of her neck. And the sepia for the darker shadow there. You can just see a tiny bit of her face, so nice and easy. Keep some of that bag white, and then I'm going to use some of the intense violet again for the shadow. Add a little bit of alizarin crimson into that so it doesn't look as if it's part of her husband's trousers. Some Prussian blue just to darken that underneath. On the other bag, I use some green, the lemon yellow, and the Prussian blue mixed together. And I 
think I'll give her a mauve bag too. Let's go for the mauve with the red mixed in. Lizard and crimson, intense violet. That would just show up quite nicely there. Dark shadow underneath. And that's still drying a little bit. Let's get that dark shadow on first. So using a whopper brush, I'm going to mix some French ultramarine and some burnt umber, but just leaving it blue, but not bright blue. I'm not going to cover all of it in dark shadow, it could be a very dark painting, so we'll just take that to there. I'll leave some of that light, there could be a band of light coming through here, nobody else will know. And take that into his shoes, right up through here. Not to leave any white bands around because they look a little bit strange. Let's bring that down and capture some dry brush marks. We've got a shadow that comes across here. some darker shadows onto her dress. So just some of that fallow blue. Just mix really thick, just squint a little bit. Just down the side of her arm, there's a little dry brush marks for creases. And this is a lovely shadow that comes across here. It starts to really take shape when this goes in. I can go back over that with some gouache in a minute, just to bring back those straps and continues down there. Just bring back a little bit of the tie-dyed effect, so a little bit more of that blue. Just run that through there. Just going to add a little bit of the intense violet. Gives you that feel of tie dyed fabric. A bit of a shadow on her neck here. Joins her head up. Dark green. I 
And we'll just put a few indications of what's going on with the background. So a little bit of mauve, intense violet, just bring a little bit of colour with this galvanised sheeting. Sort of that red. It doesn't matter because it's sort of that Caribbean feel. Down so that it joins up. And then a smaller brush, just some of the stands. So a little bit of intense violet mixed with some sepia. Just sort of indicates that they're in the marketplace. And it's probably better to underdo than overdo. A few more lines. A little bit of blue. So there we are, you have your finished Barbados market scene. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks Marilyn, lovely to style the perfect balance of colour, tone and shadows. Really captures the movement and warmth of the Caribbean. Right, before we go, we've just got time to remind you that more information on any of the products or artists featured on today's programme can be found on the SAA website. Visit saa.co.uk for details. Okay, time for a quick delve into the Splashy Paint post bag for some more of your artistic questions. Let's start off with this one from Rosie Farrell, who asks, Matthew, when you talk about natural yellow, natural blue, and natural grey, what exactly are these colours? Well, I can demonstrate this for you. These are colours that I've put together myself. Over the many, many years of painting, you tend to find that you mix your own colours and you mix them and you use them all the time. And those three colours are the colours that I used to mix together and I thought it'd be nice because they were so common colours that we could put them together and get them pre-mixed. It's a bit of a time saver. So just to show you this one, the first one being natural yellow and it looks very dark in the palette. It doesn't look like yellow, it looks kind of like baby poo to be honest, but it is actually, when you put the water with it, it's a very nice sandy colour. Now, lots of people think it's like a yellow ochre or a raw sienna, but it's not. It's its own colour. And this is a colour I used to mix all the time. And this is a colour what I use for painting buildings with or sandy beaches. And it's perfect for the bottom of a sky. Very pale because it doesn't go green when it mixes with the actual um, blue of the sky. And then natural blue is quite a special one. For a long time, I've been mixing a what I'd call a sky blue. A natural blue is a mixture of three or four blues put together to give a much brighter, more natural sky blue. It contains a lot of phthalo blue and as well as other pigments as well. And it makes quite a difference as well. The third colour is probably the most useful one. This is a colour called um, natural grey. And this is a colour that I've been teaching people to mix for many, many, many years. A natural grey for me, is my shadow colour. This is the colour, if you look around the room where you're sat watching this programme, you'll see all the grey shadows, and this is an exact version of that colour. And what's different about this compared to Payne's grey and, and neutral tint is it contains no black. It's mixed from primary colours, red, yellow and blue, so it recedes, and that is what's really important about this one. In fact, if you do a quick comparison to Payne's grey, you'll see that Payne's Grey looks black in comparison. And notice how the Payne's Grey kind of jumps forward, the natural grey goes back. The other one that people sometimes relate it to is neutral tint. A neutral tint tends to be a green or a purple shade, but again, if you look on the back of the packet for neutral tint, it contains a lots of black pigment, which is why it doesn't work so well. So that colour is very important for painting the actual shadows. And for me, it's the essential three colours.
For the second question today, Colin Oakhurst asks, if working directly onto MDF board with Atelier Acrylics, does a bind medium or liquid gesso primer need to be used first? Well, we've asked Fraser Kirkwood, who is the managing director of Chrome Europe, the Atelier Interactive Manufacturers, who has advised us that when using MDF boards with acrylics, it is advisable to use a gesso primer. And you're looking at roughly three coats to get the best results from your paintings. That's all we've got time for today, folks. But join us next week when we enter the colourful world of mixed media artist Jan Gardner. Sharon Hurst reveals a few more of her mystical secrets. And we take a sneaky peek behind the laboratory doors of the Derwent factory to see how their team of scientists have been creating innovative products since 1832. See you next time for another exciting edition of the Splash of Paint. Whether you're a beginner, improver or professional, discover more about the full range of SAA membership benefits available to bring a bigger splash of paint into your life. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details.